Good afternoon. This is Chris Brecher with Brecher Trading. May 7th, free video, Amazon versus Google, the race to 2200. With the worst case scenario video I put out last week in play, both of these could easily go to their 2200 support. Now, if you make some money from this video, go to brechertrading.com, start the 10-day free trial, which includes my Brecher Trading private trading feed, where I post things in the morning, in the afternoon, in the night of trade ideas, charts, relevant news, etc. You can also go to Stock Choice and go to their premium rooms and sign up just for the Twitter feed where it's $49 a month. Now this week, guess what? We're at the end of the earnings season. You have some big ones, but you have the Amazons, the Apples, the Googles out of the way. You have AMC, Roblox, you have Yeti coming up, you have Six Flags, and but like I said, these will be volatile, but the big ones are out of the way. The other thing that's going to be a big deal this week is Wednesday is the core CPI and Thursday the PPI. I think it's sort of silly that anybody cares because I just watched the real time Bloomberg Commodity Index and the Bloomberg Commodity Futures, which I'll show you right now. Now, the first thing I wanted to show you in here was T bond futures. So fascinating, T-bomb futures are where they were in June of 2014, this area. They've been a little lower, but June of 2014. Why is that significant? Because the Bloomberg Commodity Index futures aren't at a new high, but they're where they were May to June of 2014. Yeah, that interesting relationship there. So when the bond yields are high enough, there are other places to put your money. And that's why you're seeing the stock market sell off, especially the stocks that are valued the more about future value, present value, which uses interest rates. That's why the NASDAQ has had such a tough dive down to the three-day 200 moving average. But I'm also looking at the weekly 200-day moving average. And I'll show you why in a minute. So the first thing I wanted to show you was this, the ESs. ES is way far from the 200 on a weekly chart. Keep in mind how high this is relative to 2020 and relative to 2014 when the bonds got killed this much last time. Just keep that in mind that these markets are still straight up. If you showed this on a monthly chart, Holy cow, look at that parabolic move up. So there isn't a lot of support on the way down other than what I said in my video last night, uh, last week, 3,500. That zone in here, 3,500. So when you go into this, the next thing I'm looking at is the NASDAQ. Same kind of parabolic. And like I said last week, and I'll close it up for you. There you go. Weekly 200 day. 11,000. That's not that far away now. Yes, not that far away. Believe it or not, it's only 600 points from that 3,500 level. Now, I'm just not blindly saying 3,500. I'm saying the prior tops, that becomes support. When you go to the NASDAQ, that's sort of pushing it because the real support's down here. But still, that would get you to the 200 weekly moving average. When you look at the Russell, that's the first one to go. It's almost finally at this support. It's almost done its bear flag objective, believe it or not. But I don't see these things really rallying until you see the Z, uh, the T note really have, and the T bond really have a rally because there are other places to put your money. That's one thing, but the uncertainty of when this is going to stop. That's always the problem. Usually what happens in these is these start going down because of the bonds. The bond market starts to rally, but this has a mind of its own and overshoots, and then you have the positive divergence. So just keep that in mind. That's what I am definitely watching is for bonds to start to rally because you'll see these are at these levels. These big old levels in 2014, whether it's the notes or the futures. And like I said, you could have a bounce, but you could have the momentum of the equity market still on the downside. 
And that's why the headline of this was Google versus Amazon. Now, you're going to see there are a number of stocks like Apple that have done nothing on a weekly chart. I mean, really, that's nothing in the grand scheme of things about going down. On the right, I'll go and put a daily chart just so you get a perspective. On the other hand, let's go take the biggies, the Shopify's that don't really make much money, generate a lot of revenue. And sure enough, that's where it was all the way down to these support zones. So now let's look at Amazon and Google. Nobody would have thought when Amazon decided to do a split that the stock would almost get to these support levels. I go on the prior tops, like I said, and when you get to that, You get right to there, right to that zone between 2200 and 2100. It's a zone. It's almost there. It's 2295. So it's almost there. Then if you detach it on here, where does that put Google? Google, everybody loved till it broke that 2560. So now when you go into here, go and put a weekly chart on the right. Now, the problem with Google is, to me, they make more money, no doubt about it. But the problem is, is that it doesn't have that much support. And if you go over here and put a 200-day, you're going to see it's around 2,000. Now, that's the exponential. The normal one's even lower. That's the moving average simple. But to me, I'm looking at this. This little area right there. And the reason I'm looking at that is if you zoom out, there's a gap right here, right in that 2200 level. So that's why Amazon and Google could go to those levels. That's what it looks like to me. Now, keep in mind, they're splitting in a couple of months. So probably the downside then will be limited because more people can invest in it because it's... Uh, it's less expensive. They're doing it like 10 to one or 20 to one. But still you see these levels and that's what I'm going to be watching. I'm going to see if this ES is gonna break all the way down to here to these levels I've talked about. And then on the right, I'm gonna see if the NASDAQ can go to these levels we talked about. Now, keep in mind, that's not the end of the world, but it goes to these. Just like the Russell had all these stop, uh, tops I talked about, look at these tops in the ES on the right and this area in the NASDAQ futures. It could go even lower, but usually in here, this zone in here, you have multiple zones. The big support is definitely that prior top just like the prior top here. And then if you go into the Russell, the prior top here, where it almost is. So these could definitely have another 10% move down. Yes, another 10% move down. And that would get you to good support. The whole point with this entire thing is where does the stock market go to where it compensates enough for the bond market getting torched? Say, assuming that the bond market doesn't get any worse. So those are the levels that I think compensate you enough. Now, the problem with this is the Fed wants interest rates to go up to cool off the economy. The problem is production problems and supply problems aren't going to care about interest rates, but housing will. So if they accomplish their purpose of cooling off the economy, they're going to cool off housing. And there are a lot of people that have bought houses that are 80% higher than they were eight months ago. What happens if they put 20% down? If the houses go to just half that, like a Fibonacci re uh, retracement, guess what? They're wiped out of their equity. So this is a very dangerous time, but I do think you're going to get a bounce in this area just because then the NASDAQ and the ES themselves bounce from levels that take into a lot of the account of the first spike in interest rates. 
not the ramifications after the spike like housing, but the ramifications when it comes to their cash flow models. So that's the way I'm looking at the markets. Hope you like this video. Like I said, Amazon, Google, race to 2200. Take care.